Hey guys, how's it going? The dominoes are starting to fall, everyone. We finally got the animal plastics enclosures in. I'm really excited. There's four in there, and we're going to be building two of them today. So let's get to it. This is going to be a really stressful process. Not exactly sure how it's going to be filmed, but we're going to go and do it. So let's hop in there and start it now. Just spent all night last night tidying up this garage for today, and now it's a mess again. So that's going to be fun. But let's start building these two six-foot enclosures. They're going to be going right back there along the wall. We'll be moving those roaches, crickets, whatever over there out of the way. And this is where they're going to be going. Okay, and enclosure number one is done. Now, I considered filming the whole assembly process. But I thought, number one, this is a custom-ordered enclosure, not one of their standard ones they have on the site, so I don't think anybody would take much away from me assembling this piece by piece. I didn't think it would be too interesting, and it would be a little bit less stressful for me to just focus on building the enclosure. Now, all I have to do left is take off the lid here, and then put a sealant around the bottom and up the sides a little bit, and then let that dry. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the second enclosure that I'm doing today, which is an exact copy of this one, so it should be pretty straightforward. Okay, and it looks like we are done with both enclosures. Like I said, the same exact ones. Now you might be asking, why do neither of them have lids? And that's just because of the sealant that I put along the side. You can kind of see that darker part in the corner. I just kept the lid off to let that dry and air out a lot faster and easier. And I did it for this one too. That shouldn't, those are the two top pieces right there, but that shouldn't take too much work to put back on. And then the two other enclosures I have right here, and I did a whole lot of cleaning up. By the way, if anybody knows how you get rid of this large pallet, I never really had to deal with this, so I'm kind of confused and not knowing of how to get rid of it. So let me know, that would be appreciated. Okay, I just did a bunch of heavy lifting, but this should be enough for one enclosure. I have 13 bags of topsoil here. I think I'll only need 12. And then I got three bags of sand, so I do two parts. As you guys know, topsoil, organic topsoil to one part play sand. So that should be one third of it. This should be two thirds of it. I also have a lot more. I mean, I have to do this other enclosure anyway. So if something's off, I know what's off and I can fix it. Hey guys, okay, so what I'm gonna do, and what I've already started doing, is I got some maple branches and logs from across the street. They were cutting down a tree, and I thought I'd take advantage of it. But there's some what I think is pronounced lichen on it. Tell me if I'm wrong. I'm just a shot in the dark here. But it really looks kind of like little mosses on it. And from what I read, it shouldn't be harmful or impactful to any of the reptiles. But what I'm gonna do just in case as a precaution is I filled this up with really hot water and I'm just scrubbing down the branches with this little, I don't know, scrubby thing. So that's what I'm gonna be doing real quick. I already did two of them, kind of logs, and then I have to do a couple branches and stuff like that. This is just a precaution. I don't know, I think it'll be fine. And it actually does look pretty good in an enclosure. So, you know, it would be nice to keep it, but first experience with it. So let's see what happens.
By the way, this green stuff, that's like the lichen that I'm talking about. Just want to give that FYI so you can see a visual. Some of them are pretty, they're not really that pronounced most of the time. Sometimes they look a little bit more dull. There's not really any dull ones on here, kind of like this or something, but it's pretty obvious. You should definitely notice it. It's a discoloration, basically. Okay, so I scrubbed all these down. That was not something I would like to do again, but I did my best scrubbing them down and I think they look a lot better. And I actually, <laughs> this guy right here, this guy, I went to drop slowly into the bucket and it ended up falling from my grip. And uh, yeah, now there's water everywhere and on me. But I already started decorating a little bit in here. That's what I'm gonna be doing. This is gonna be part of the basking spot. There's a hide there and the water bowl. Now for that hide there, that's pretty low to the ground and actually something I kept my eye on for quite a while. I like how low to the ground it is. It really looks like a crevice and something that could be a jump start to a burrow. So I think this would look or do really well with Ackies. And I'm gonna be trying out this bowl from now on with Ackies. It's worked well in the past for frat and it doesn't get as dirty and grimy. So we'll see how this goes, but let's go ahead and decorate the rest of this. And this is what the inside's gonna look like. You can see the rock there that I put, a bunch of fallen maple logs that's gonna be all across here. And this over here is gonna be the basking spot. Hide there, and then the water bowl there, and that's really what it's gonna look like on the inside. I think it looks really nice, guys. But now let's see what it looks like when it's all done. Okay, so I actually had to do a little bit more modification. You can see it's already getting very foggy because of the humidity. But I had to move these up a little bit because they were not getting hot enough for a basking spot. Something I kind of anticipated. And what I actually had to do to do that, and this was kind of important, let me open this up, is I had to make the substrate higher up on this one side. I don't know if you can tell, but it kind of slopes up here and slopes down on the other end. And I kind of need to do that instead of just raising these up. You could already see I positioned them differently. I needed to do that because if a female's gonna lay in here, let's just say theoretically, then there would need a spot down there that's about 86 degrees and humid. So I need there to be that place to exist, if that makes sense. But you can see, I know it's a little blurry that I'm getting what I need. It's actually a little too high. I think I gotta lower the log down a little bit because it's hitting 160, which is fine, but I kind of want to make it a little bit less in that area. And then down here in the substrate, which is what I need, I'm getting in the 90s, exactly what I would need for laying temperatures. The other cool thing I like about what I did with the slope, you can see the high that I was showing off earlier. I kind of built it into the slope like it was an outcrow on, I don't know, a hill or something like that. It's kind of hard, kind of dark. I don't have the UVB yet. That should be coming in, I think, tomorrow. But I thought that was pretty neat to do. But yes, that's pretty much one enclosure set up. Like I said, all I need is to do the UVB, which should be coming in any day now. Looks pretty nice. I will say that it was very difficult putting in these glass doors, and I'm not too thrilled with them. I actually broke off a little shard on one I was trying to use previously. But, you know, that's how it goes. It wasn't too bad, but I definitely think this could be done and implemented better. Now we're on to LG's enclosure. So that's what I'm gonna be working on next. Okay, it looks like we are good here. I gotta put the lid on and stuff like that. 
Not gonna put the sliding doors in just yet because there is wood in LG's current enclosure in the trough that I wanna put in here first. But I wanna get the temp set up and make them correct and then I obviously have to put the UVB in there. So that's what I'm gonna do next. But this is what it kinda looks like right now and I think it looks pretty good. I used two rocks here and you could kinda get in between there to kinda burrow which is really cool. Kinda mimics the rocky outcrops or outcrops. I, I think I'm saying that right. Let me know if I'm saying that wrong. That feels weird when it comes off my tongue. But it kind of mim mimics that, so I think it's kind of cool. And then uh, a lot of climbing, which is awesome. And I think this is gonna have to come down a little bit. It might be too close to the UVB, but we'll have to see. And then the basking site on this thing is gonna look really cool. It's a much thicker, taller log. This actually goes into the substrate quite a bit. I think you might have seen it when I was cleaning it off. But that's gonna look really great, and I think it should be at a good height. I kind of did it far enough where it was, like I compared it to this one basically. So I kind of got the same height there. So hopefully this will be pretty spot on. And here we are, all done. Both of them have UVB in them, and both of them have residence. So that should be a good video coming up that you guys will want to check out. But I can show off LG who is in this enclosure. He's right over there. He's been really checking it out like any Aki would be. So that's been really cool. I fed both of the guys in these enclosures today. Been monitoring the temps. There's one over there. I'm not really sure where else to put it, but been monitoring them. My biggest concern with these being in the garage is if it gets too cold, too windy, it's not gonna be a good night temperature. It might be too low. But so far, I've been testing out this, uh, I don't know, space heater, I think that, well, it's not a space heater because you're not supposed to run a space heater all the time, but this has been designed that you can run it 24 seven. So I'm heating up the garage with this. And so far, testing it over a couple months period, it hasn't dipped below 70s. So, and it's been below 30s some nights. So, it's working out pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. These enclosures look really nice, and I'm pretty satisfied. And that wraps up this video. Let me know if you guys are hyped to see what is going in the enclosure that you guys are on top of right now. But I'm excited. I already started recording, obviously, the unboxing because I said they're already in there. But we got a lot of cool stuff to come still. I got more enclosures to build, one for Max and other stuff like that. I got an incubator coming in. I got something coming in for Frappuccino. We got a lot of cool stuff coming up, guys. So make sure to stay tuned, subscribe, leave a like and comment as well. Shout out to the patrons. I want to thank Darian J, Kat and Rick, Mahan's Bioactive Reptiles, David T, Herb M, Angela L, Stephanie, and Smooth Cat. I really appreciate your support. You guys want to support the Patreon? Maybe be on my far head. Check the upper right hand corner. There's more information there. Tier 3 gets you on my head. Also, check out the merch. That will be to the left of my head, right of your screen. We have four different designs. We got Tegu, Aki, Bearded Dragon, really cool stuff to wear at conventions. Check the Teespring link in the description below for more information. All right, guys, you know what? Let's leave you with a little bit of a teaser. Let's see if I can do this without spoiling anything. Do, 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 do. Oh, what's that right there? Hmm. Guess you'll have to find out on Monday.